Hello, Michael. Hello, Todd. How are you? All right. Good to see you again. Yeah, I haven't seen you in a while, and uh, loyal followers of your channel <laughs> will recognize the tail of this bike because it showed up a couple times when I persuaded you to go over to the coast and look at the Nortons in the bedroom that we salvaged that we moved to the shop and are still there. Oh, they really? It was pretty much the same condition as they were. But this is my 1978 Suzuki GS1000. I call it a standard model. Some people call it the C model, which is just confusing. Suzuki made two variations on this bike at the time. I have an older brother who had a Kawasaki 900 that was a couple years older than this, and I rode that, and it was all exciting because big muscle motor and all that. And then when this came out and got all the rave reviews, I uh, had to go test ride one. So, of course, I borrowed his Kawasaki to go test ride. <laughs> <laughs> Suzuki, which worked really well. But then as it had happened, I moved from one state out to Oregon and then went down, started looking for one. And uh, I went to the dealer about 30 miles away from where I was living and he had this bike, he had the other version of this bike, and then he had a 79. So it was actually in the spring of 79 when I bought it. And I bought it brand new. It now has 86,137 miles on it. And it's so low because when I had children, it basically sat for 10 years. Over the years, I have made many changes to the bike. I love the bike because it was way ahead of its time in 1978. It was the second superbike revolution. There was this bike, the Yamaha XS11, the Honda CBX, and Kawasaki was still making their KZ bike. So this one had all the handling and a lot better power. People say that this is just a copy of the Z1. Well, if they did, they did a lot better job copying <laughs> it because it's a better bike. I own three of these. Neither of the other two are in any kind of condition to look at right now. But I keep this one and I keep riding it. I had the idea of making it back to stock until about four or five years ago when I got on Facebook and got on some groups for this bike. People had nice original ones and it was like, hmm. This was one of the last wire wheel bikes that you could buy from Japan. The other model had cast wheels. This step seat is off the other model, as is the basis of the front end. Those are things I've just mixed and matched. I have the original seat. I have to redo it. One more project. <laughs> One more project. I just redid these covers, and that was a pro project. You know, redoing a bike is not a project. It's 125 <laughs> projects. A lot of the things I liked about this bike is the power, then the handling. It was judged the best handling bike at the time. Then I improved it by adding this aluminum swing arm. No machining, no nothing, it bolts right up. You just have to get the chain guard that goes with it because they don't interchange because this one's longer. And then right now it's wearing some original Coney shocks. The front end came off the other model that had twin brakes and somebody on the GS forum came up with these adapters that hold the caliper. This bike came with one disc brake and a single piston caliper. And that seemed good in 1979, but as the years went by, you realize that that was really not the best braking setup. So my buddy Dan came up with this. He put the twin disc forks on it and the adapter, and then these are calipers off like a 1990 Kawasaki Concourse or something like that. I have just bins of parts and pieces beyond the other two bikes. At one of those parts lots, I picked up this fork brace and I had a different fork brace, which I still have, the old type that's like a saddle. Anyway, I've been trying to improve it back and make it look better. A couple of unique things about this bike, besides it's at the time advanced engineering, was that it was, I believe, the first bike that came without a Kickstarter. You can see down there where the Kickstarter would be, there's just a big shiny cover. <laughs> The other thing is, is I think it's the first Japanese bike that had aluminum rims. That was one of the things. They look to save weight on this bike, and even though it weighs in at about 535 pounds, for you Norton guys, that seems awful porky, but <laughs> for a big guy like me, it's really not. I bought it back then. I rode the heck out of it for about three or four years. 
I had to replace the pipes because I would go off-roading with it. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot, just go up gravel roads and that, that really beats up your pipes. And I went into the now defunct Portland motorcycle one day to get some parts and I looked up and there was a set of pipes hanging from the ceiling and I said, how much are those? And he told me and I bought them and went home and got my car and picked them up and put them on. So these are still in relatively good shape considering that they've been on the bike for 40 years. It's been repainted at one point. It, mechanically, it's really good. Cosmetically, mm, it's what they call a survivor these days. So it has a lot of uh, patina to it. <laughs> yes, the character. Character that has occurred over the years. <laughs> I have ridden it all over the Northwest and down to Central California and up into Canada. The last major trip I took was like five years ago. It's 865 miles from my friend's house in Vernonia to my friend's house in Cranbrook. And it took 1,100 plus miles to get there wow. because we took the motorcycle away. Yeah. So I ended up with almost 2,600 miles on it coming back from that trip. So it's very comfortable. It originally had much higher handlebars stock. They were like this, which I may have to go back to because I'm getting too old to bend over <laughs> that much anymore. Have you had the engine apart at all in all those years? About 1990, I suffered from what all the other Suzuki GS people do, which is it just keeps running so much that you kind of forget to do your maintenance. <laughs> and on a double oiled cam motor like this, you forget that the valve clearances are gonna tighten up. And so it tightened up and it could use a bore and I had thrashed it hard. So I put a Weisco 1085 high compression piston kit in it in about 1990 and redid the head then. And the Weisco kit has been flawless. I can run regular gas with it and gave me a bunch more torque, which is what I really like in a motorcycle. I don't need to go 160 miles an hour. The GS still has a very active forum, the gsresources.com, and we used to have a very active meet every year, oh. up to 20 people. The 78s are a one-year-only body style. They have a couple of unique features compared to the 79 and 80, one of which is this big, in, you can't see it too well on camera, but this is actually an indentation in the tank and the tail with this contrasting stripe on it. Those have become quite valuable, so that's why I'm happy to have three sets of them. There's the two years, what they call the West Cooley bike, which is where this fair, nose fairing came from that commemorated Wes Cooley's two superbike champions in 79 and 80. And those have gone up in value. And then there's an offshoot, the original Katana with the weird oh, yeah. styling. That's valuable too. Another valuable bike is Vance and Hines, the uh, drag racers were drag racing one of these. And they took one that's otherwise stock and just gave it a special paint job. And I think they made I don't know, they made 20 or 50 of these and then with one of the motorcycle magazines gave them away. So I've only seen one of those. You know, that's kind of the, the spectrum of value. There's the average, these are slightly above average. And yeah, they are appreciating. I bought this bike in the spring of 79 because I just thought it was the greatest thing on the market. I was a young single guy, I had money in my pocket and I rode it everywhere for a while. It was my only transportation. And it's just been, for me, the greatest bike, which is why I still have it. 33 years ago, met my wife one evening and we went for a ride on it the next day and went for a picnic. And so that started a long relationship. So it has a lot of sentimental meaning to me. I've been everywhere and done everything on it pretty much. I still have some goals for it. I don't think that this bike will ever be sold. I'll just keep improving it and uh, pass it on to my son who's an avid rider and hopefully he'll enjoy it and uh, keep it up for a long time. It's very easy to keep, so that's one of the good things. Thank you very much, Todd. It was a All pleasure right. having you over. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, Mike.
Thanks very much for watching guys. This has been another tale from the cul-de-sac. Please remember to subscribe and click the little bell and you'll get a notice whenever I release a new video, usually every Sunday morning and sometimes during the week.